Hello and welcome to Imperfect Garden. Today we're going to look at the origin of Bofors, the 40mm M36 anti-aircraft cannon. And in this video I will show you the prototype to the 40mm cannon. But before I will show you the super rare prototype, let's go back to the process of how they developed uh, the famous L60 cannon. After the First World War, many armors across the world uh, understood that this new phenomenon, the aircraft, would continue developing and become a serious threat to the land-based armies of the future. And the thing is, most armies were thinking about how can we neutralize this threat? How can we shoot down the airplanes? And also, how can we shoot down the airplanes in the future? Because, of course, everyone... It was the same thing with the tanks from First World War and in the 20s. You could see a huge development in, in, in the progress, how they developed. And in the 30s, we have a completely different tank than we have in the 1915, 16, 17 and 80s. The Swedish military had made some small attempts in the 1920s to see what kind of weaponry we could use to shoot down the airplanes that existed in the 1920s. But it wasn't really until the 25th November of 1928 when Bofors uh, got the order from the, let's see if I can say this correctly now, the Royal Swedish Naval Material Administration to develop a new kind of anti-aircraft cannon. The caliber they wanted was a 40 millimeter cannon and they wanted something to be able to shoot as fast as possible. And really that was the only thing, that was on the, on the conditions that they wanted. 40 millimeters, shoot as fast as possible. Bofors had earlier done some experiments with a, a British cannon to work on a, a prototype for a cannon, but now they got a, a official order, uh, a budget and a target what they needed to produce or, or develop. The man behind the Bofors 40mm cannon was a very interesting character. I could do a whole video just about him. His name was Victor Hammar and he was the chief engineer at Bofors for a very long time, from the 1920s all the way to World War II. He did a lot of development about uh, loading, how to load a cannon as fast as possible. And of course, Bofors, all the way from the, the end of the 1800s, uh, was very progressive in, in, in loading the, the locking mechanism, how you can do it faster, and stronger so you can have uh, larger calibers and larger charges. And when you are going to develop something on a budget and you know you want to break a lot of things, of course you take whatever things you already have. So they took old cannons and tried to start experimenting with them to see what kind of loading system we can use and everything. And when we come now to the prototype I will show you, this is one of the cannons they start using. Uh, this is a, a old Swedish marine uh, naval cannon. It's a, it's a quick fire system. As you can see here, here you have the, the Bofors uh, locking screw and you see it's like very fast. It's a interrupted screw. So that means that the screws is not all the way around like this. They have holes. So you can just push it in and just twist it a little bit so it's very fast to open uh, the breech to load new uh, shells. The naval cannon they used uh, was called M98B. It's a 37 millimeter cannon. Uh, it's a quick fire cannon. Really, there's not much information about this. I mean, you should think that there's a lot of info about this. But <laughs> again, here, when you talk about older weaponry, more unique weaponry, 
most of the information you only find in the libraries in books so so very little is on online uh, and this is a little bit typical with smaller countries like sweden or or the czech uh, manufacturers too a lot of the old weaponry have never been uh, the information has never gone from the old books and, and all the facts there and put online. So the 37 millimeter naval cannon M98B. Uh, there is some original cannons like the one you see here that is still in the museums. Uh, there's, not, there's not a lot of them. Uh, we have some down in the South Sweden in, in Kalmar I think. Uh, but anyway they took this gun as the base and then they needed to see how can we instead of using and opening a breach like this how can we make some kind of of, of feeding system that just feeds uh, the shells more more faster and reliable and imagine too we talked about an anti-aircraft gun it doesn't shoot level like this like would you do with an like a, a uh, anti-tank gun you need to be able to to tilt the cannon almost up to like 90 degrees and still be able to feed it without having any jamming or or problem why was Bofors m36 uh, so successful as a anti-aircraft cannon well it was very precise it had good muscle velocity uh, good range but the biggest thing was they could get so many shells into the cannon and away and of course they did not uh, force the shells from a magazine into they use gravity so as you can see in the, in in like 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 in this photo here you have the magazine on top of the cannon and you, you just throw down uh, four four shells clips into the feeder so the faster you could just throw down the clips the faster the cannon would shoot and it was automatic of course so that means as soon as a shell is in the right position it will fire and then you will fire and fire and as soon as the quickly you you feed it the fire the faster it could fire but of course there is a a, a limit to to how fast it could physically move the barrel and remember this is a, a long recoil uh, system so so the whole breech and and the barrel they moves together and of course in the last part the breech go back and the new shell goes in it slams in fires and everything moves again when they developed the prototype they took as again the old marine cannon the m98b uh, and they put on a, a gravity controlled feeding system from the top and in this video here when you see the the, the the unique prototype and remember this is the only prototype that exists I have not seen anymore this is it this is the single prototype with the feeding system that eventually goes into M36 and you can see here this is a very simple mechanism because it, it's a rather simple idea, it's a genius idea. Uh, and from the top there, they just cram down the, 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 the shells. But remember now, this is not the 40 millimeter shells you will see in the future. This, is the, this was fed from the original shells to that cannon. Uh, here's just one picture of, 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 of a surviving empty shell. The interesting thing with this cannon, I do not really know if this is semi-automatic or if it's a full automatic. Because in the paper, uh, the information I can find, it says, the, yes, after 1928, they developed one cannon that could fire 250 uh, shots per five minutes. And they say it was semi-automatic. But they don't really specify that it's this cannon. So I am not sure. I think this is the same automatic. So as you underneath it, you have the trigger. So probably they had to manually shoot for every shell. And this was not, of course, 
enough so they continue on and build the whole uh, a new barrel uh, the recoil system and everything and in 1933 i think it was in october 1933 the new Bofors m36 ish is finished and by it, the name is m36 because in 1936 it's officially uh, designated and put into service uh, for the navy and of course the new shell is not a 30 70 millimeter as in the marine cannon is of course it's, it's a famous uh, 40 times 311 millimeters and as you know they built a huge amount of of uh, Bofors 40 millimeter cannon and we still produce it but it, the, now it's the the l70 uh, but I will not talk about that gun we, because we need to focus in now on, on the prototype because that is one million more videos to just talk about the whole evolutions from 1930 to until today. Uh, let's continue on with the marine cannon, uh, the M98B. Because yes, before she took it and used this as a base for the prototype to use a faster feeding system. But the cannon in itself, the the M ninety eight B, we did we did have other uses for it, because as you remember, it's it's used for the old naval ships of of the eighteen hundred and early nineteen hundred. But we also used it in some armored car. I have no idea how many we developed or produced, uh, but I know that besides. Uh, the prototype by Bofors, we use it in two armored cars too. One is the one that's called the M31, the armored truck that I talked about in an earlier video, uh, where we, where we, in 1942, we put in the Bofors M40B, the, the, the very good 20 millimeter autocannon. But before we, we changed to that cannon in 1942, the early version of this armored truck, the M31, that means it was developed and, and got the designation in 1931. In the early versions, we put in this 30 millimeters uh, marine cannon in a small mount with a, with a, with a armored shield on top. Um, but of course, I can imagine it was not, it was probably not very easy to shoot the 37 millimeter cannon on top of a armored truck so of course it was much easier in 1942 to go for a 20 millimeters auto cannon but also in our very experimental and very unique armored car before the m31 we had the the fm29 the the toad and it's it's this truck, I, I love this truck, it looks so steampunk. That also used the M98 naval cannon. And today, uh, we don't have so many of these cannons left. I know I have seen, uh, not personally, but I've seen pictures. The M98 cannons are in a few museums, as I said earlier in this video. And of course, this prototype. Uh, M98 that we the Bofors used. It's again it's located in Kalskoga. In Kalskoga in Sweden we have the Bofors is still there, the factory Bofors, it's in Kalskoga. And they have a beautiful museum at a the Alfred Nobel's uh, his mansion and we have a lot of weaponry and history there. So if you come to Sweden anytime please go to this museum because you will see cannons and equipment there that only exist here. They, they, they are so very rare and they're completely in the open and everyone can just pay a little bit. It's a very little fee to get, get in and you can visit them and touch them and everything. It's, a, it's a really amazing as a historian. Next time, I think we will start talking more about uh, the M36, the L60, before the famous anti-aircraft cannon. Because it's there's so much history about it, and, and it's very interesting to see more of the development into it, and also how it changes 
from the 1930s until today, how they change it to keep up with the time, with the uh, with the, how the aircraft uh, developed so fast. I mean, from 1930 to 1950, the jump in aircraft development is 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 quite amazing. Uh, so, but that will be in the next video. Uh, until then, I hope you like this this short video, and uh, see you soon. And have a very beautiful day today. I have no idea. I think it's a Wednesday today. So have a nice Wednesday. Goodbye.